This is Sean Morley, Morley's Muscle. It's been a while since we've last posted a video. Of course, one of our uh, most popular videos is setting the steering head bearings on your VMAX. Well, today we're going to be setting your camshaft timing for if you do a camshaft replacement or an engine assembly. Uh, we've had a lot of questions on how to properly set it. We're going to go through and show you the standard method that we used when we're putting in camshafts in a, uh, a normal orientation. There's adjustable sprockets out there and we won't get into how to how to set those so this is basically how you would set up a stock uh, set of cams and cam sprockets. Uh, first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get your motor set on T1. doesn't matter at this point if it's an exhaust stroke T1 or intake stroke T1 because you haven't set the correlation of your camshafts to the block. So first thing just set your your block up on T1. And now when I mark, when I discuss T1, I'm discussing these marks here. You got a T1 mark and you have a T2 mark. And these are what we use to set the heads with. Let me get you a little better alignment here. The T1 you'll notice has a lot of different marks here. The correct mark is this line right next to the T1. We'll see if we can't get it in the video here. Maybe have to back out a little bit so it'll focus. And then there we go. Now that shows you good. Alright, and then of course the T2 is the, the line right here right next to the, the T2 mark. Difficult to show you this while we're going to be doing it on the block. But what you're basically doing is you're going to be looking through this inspection hole, aligning this arrow, which is right here, to that mark. So you have this arrow here, a notch in the threads, and you'll have that T1 mark that you'll have to look up and at an angle to see. So we'll come around here and... So you're going to be looking up and at an angle through this hole to see this T1 mark with that alignment arrow. So once you've got that aligned, then we're ready to set our cams. And when we're doing our camshafts, the manual talks about setting the rear head first and set it to small dots. Let me grab that little indicator here. So when you look on the camshaft you have a small dot or a small almost looks like a drill bit start and there's a larger one. Same thing here with the intake cam. There's a small one and the larger one is down where we can't see it at, at this particular moment. But we're going to start out by aligning the rear head T1 small dots to this casting in the cam cap. Now what the manual says to do is to leave the sprockets loose, align the the cam, put your bolts in the sprockets, tighten them up. I don't like that method just because it's it takes a little longer and you gotta unbolt the sprockets off the camshaft. So what I like to do is to go ahead and make sure that I've got my cams here loosely installed. I'm going to pull the tension in this chain, get the chain nice and tight on the opposite side of the camshaft tensioner. So pull that camshaft up tight. I'm going to have to use two different wrenches here to get this in because right now my camshaft lobes are getting ready to start applying tension to the first set of valves, but my dot is not lined up yet. So we're going to pull some tension in this, get that dot aligned, and then I'll hold that tension on there. My dot is already aligned on this rear cam. I'm going to take all the slack out of this chain, make sure that my alignment is still there. Pull the slacks out and then with my free hand now, this is the little tricky part where you either need to get someone to assist you or you've got to do it your, yourself. You've got to get this 
tensioner up into the engine hole. Now this is the tensioner housing. I've already disassembled the tensioner and I've relieved the tension. I'll show you with that front head's tensioner here in just a moment. I'm not worried about the spring-loaded mechanism part of the tensioner at this point yet. So, install those bolts, snug them down, make sure your gasket's on there. Now the gasket will only go on the one direction. Now since I've snugged those down, I'm going to go ahead and manually set that tensioner. Then it allow me to take the tension that I have to hold on the camshaft off. So note that I'm still aligned with my small hole to my Itch. engraving here. Same thing with the front camshaft. And all the tensions, all the slack is now out of the chain here. Now depending on the wear and if you've reused your chains, this alignment may not be just 100% exact, but you want to get it as close as it will allow. If you're a tooth off, it's a fairly good amount off on the camshaft. Now the tricky part that a lot of people will actually uh, make their error on. And the manual states to that we need to rotate the engine 360 degrees plus an additional 70 degree, degrees in a counterclockwise direction. So we're basically setting our selves up to do the front cams relationship to the pistons. Now it also cautions you about using the center bolt that's in the middle of the flywheel and into the crankshaft. It's possible that you could loosen this bolt up inadvertently when you're trying to rotate this. Your it manual states that you should use a much larger socket. I've never really had a situation where my tension has been that high and had this bolt come loose. Now, of course, I don't have any uh, spark plugs in the motor to create that additional resistance. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to rotate this over. Now, here is the, the tricky part since I've already set my front cam shafts in place is as I'm rotating this engine, I don't want my front camshafts to rotate, so I'm going to have to take this a little bit in stages and also make sure that I've got slack available to, to uh, allow this motor to rotate. So the other thing I'm going to do is go ahead and set my camshafts so that they're all the way in a rear Give me the most opportunity for rotation here. All right, so let's see how far we can get. Now we're going to go. Remember, we got to go 360 degrees to T1, and again another 70 to get to that T2 mark. So we're going to start rotating. It's going to go ahead and pull that camshaft around. I'm at 90 degrees. I still have a little more before my lobe gets bound up. There's 180, and now I need to go ahead and get some more rotation ability out of my camshafts. Now the other way a guy could do this is not have these camshafts installed yet and get the motor rotated over and then do the camshafts. I, I went ahead and installed them for the purpose of this video just to save a little bit of time. So now we got to go an additional... 180 degrees here and now we're going to be back to our T1 I'm just going to take a quick, quick look I've got to get a little more rotation ability I've got to get another 70 degrees out of this rotation to get myself aligned up to the T2 mark Here and I'm going to start watching for my T2. 
if I can do this one hand in here. Alright, so there's my T2. I need to bump it back and get that mark just perfect here. Alright, so I know you probably aren't going to be able to see this through here, but I've now aligned my T2 mark to my arrow and I'm ready to set my front camshaft timing. These tools are out. These are 22 millimeter wrenches that I'm using. And then a 5 millimeter for the tensioner. Now this side is going to be just slightly different because I'll be able to go ahead and put my initial tension on the the rear head first. Now note here again, now we have our small hole and our big hole. On this front head, we need to align it to our big hole. So and we got to pull all the slack out of it. Make sure we're on our sprocket. And then we've got to get this rotation ready. Got to find our Our big hole here. This big hole is not as clear. You can see how small that hole is. Let me get this rotated around. And there's a slightly bigger hole on this side. Now I'm already starting to preload my valve valves over here so I've got to hold again that same pressure as I align it up so now I'm aligned with that I'm ready to set my got nice tight measurement there I'll go ahead and drop our here's what I meant by you need to reset your tensioner as this adjusts out this tensioner will get longer to make up for slack in the chain. So it will automatically do that as the chain wears. You don't have to use a manual device. And these are fairly uh, fairly good tensioners. We don't see very many problems with these tensioners. Though from time to time you'll see a one that will break but pretty, pretty infrequent. Probably out of the hundreds of engines over the years, I've only seen two that have ever broken, and one of those was during assembly. So we got that down. Need to give it a quick snug. push the manually get the tension set and that will let me ease off there okay so once you've got this first round done you can go through install your spring so that this will have some pressure all the time and automatically adjust those camshafts as the chain is wearing get those threaded in there <clears throat> and then you'll be able to go through and put in your chain tensioners or not chain tensioner, your chain guides. You've got the center guide here, and then you'll have a long guide that will go in with the nubs up and the arc away from you. So at first it might seem like it doesn't want to go in. 
you'll get those slid in there. Now what you're going to want to do once you've got this thing assembled is you'll go through here and get to T1 again and then do the rotation and see if it lands correctly back on its big dots and, and small dots respectively. That way you've got a chance if you, if you messed it up you'll be able to fix it again. Now interestingly enough if you don't get the rotation correct these engines will actually still run. They'll run very poorly. You might think you might have a carburetor problem. It'll backfire, it'll start rev, you can ride it, it'll just seem like it's down on power. And uh, what you'll need to do then is, if you have messed with the camshafts, it's quite likely you've got the orientation off. Anyway, so that's uh, kind of the procedure we use. Like I mentioned, the the OEM does it a little bit differently, and you're welcome to use that method as well. And uh, slotted sprockets, of course, hold different scenario, so you can forward, you can retard or advance cams to move your power curve. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this finished together. I'm going to double check my uh, cam t timing, and I'm going to also go through and double check my valve lash while I've got the the engine assembled. We did that initially when the heads were done, but it's always good to double check that. And until uh, next time, it's Sean Morley, Morley's Muscle. Have a good day.